After we arrived late at night in the city of San Pedro Sula, located north of Honduras, we continued on to Copan the following morning. Copan is situated in the Northern Triangle, Honduras, Guatemala, San Salvador, and it's pretty dangerous to visit this region. Assaults on foreigners are not uncommon. En route, we stopped briefly at a small street restaurant. It was there we had the chance to take a snapshot of our first reptile, a young Ameva undulata. These are widely spread across Central America and reach a length of approximately 25 centimeters. At breakfast the next morning, we made plans for the day. We decided to take a walk to a nearby waterfall. We inquired about the safety of the area and were immediately provided with six armed soldiers for our protection. It was an extremely interesting but exhausting excursion. At 35 degrees Celsius, it was dry and hot. The scenery was stunningly beautiful and the waterfall allowed us to cool off, which was so refreshing. Roland caught two different types of life-bearing fish with his landing net in the stream of the waterfall, as well as a large type of shrimp. The first type was the sword tail of the genus Xiphophorus. The second type of fish was a life-bearing heterandria species and a large shrimp of the genus Macrobranchium. We were also able to spot a young striped basilisk called a Basiliscus vitatus. These are very widespread across all of Central America. The first frog we found was a larger tree frog of the genus Smilisca. We also came across a lot of small Anolis sagre lizards. Frogs of the genus Leptodactylus were sitting all over the water. The highlight was definitely finding a small Leptodera annulata, which is a genus of the colubrid snake. This colubrid snake reaches just over a meter in length and mainly feeds on frogs. We were also able to detect a Chinosternum leucostonum, which is a white-lipped mud turtle. This is a relatively small type of water turtle with a carapace length of approximately 18 centimeters. Another refreshing dip in the waterfall made the walk back to our accommodation more bearable. The way back took us across a stream where the landscape appeared to be quite dry. I would imagine this would look quite different during the raining season. The following morning, we tackled the next leg of our expedition. We took a minibus towards La Ceiba to get to the Pico Bonito National Park. After breakfast, we left for the rainforest. Its name certainly did itself justice as the heavens open up in short intervals. It was way too cold and wet, apparently even for the amphibians. Small streams and waterfalls featured all over the national park. Small caves are always interesting. Quite often, they are the homes of some fascinating animals. Despite Paul's physical efforts, he was unable to spot any wildlife. But with a little patience and perseverance, you can always find something such as this small forest scorpion.
Millipedes are fascinating arthropods. They feed mainly on decomposed leaves or wood. Even frugivores, fruit eaters, have plenty of menu choices in the rainforest. Pico Bonito National Park is without a doubt one of the most diverse national parks in Honduras, and with heights up to 2,378 meters above sea level, it is also an area with the most enormous differences in altitude in the whole country. Named after the mountain south of La Ceiba, the national park was created and is, beyond doubt, one of the reasons why La Ceiba has become a popular ecotourism destination. Generally, where there's a lot of water, you'll find frogs. And that's exactly what we uncovered. Thousands of tadpoles that decided to stay in the calmer part of the stream. The water temperature was not exactly inviting at approximately 19 degrees. Norops tropidonotus is a small brown forest anolis and is very common in this region. The large striped basilisks, here a mature male, love sunny spots at the outskirts of the forest. After the rest of the day remained cool, wet and humid, we were rewarded with beautiful sunshine on our day of departure. The Aracari, a small type of toucan, is tricky to photograph as they're very timid. These slightly larger keel-billed toucans are easier to capture on camera. In the mornings around 8 a.m., the air temperature was approximately 18 degrees. It took about one hour in a small plane to get from La Ceiba to the Caribbean coast of La Mosquitia, our next stopover. A minibus took us to the nearby village of Bruce Laguna. A small refreshment and a snack containing local beans, which are part of every dish, gave us strength for our next adventure. After a short break, we stowed our equipment on a boat and took off. We had to get to the other side of a large lagoon. After roughly half an hour's drive, smoke was coming out of the engine and it died. We had to stop in the middle of the marsh, surrounded by thousands of mosquitoes. Our guide had no choice but to head to the next village on foot and borrow a horse so he could ride to the nearest bigger town. Here he organized a large motorized log boat made from wood and arrived back shortly before dark. <laughs> We just made it to the Raista village before complete darkness set in. Here we were greeted by very ordinary accommodation. After a tasty dinner, including of course the native beans, we explored the neighborhood. But apart from many leaf cutter ants, we only came across Hemidactylus frenatus, a type of gecko. Raista is a small, dreamy village situated at the edge of the lagoon with hospitable people and not much else. The number of orchids and tillandsias in the trees were striking. We had breakfast around 7 a.m. Guess what we had? 
Then we took a wobbly log boat all in a row without much room to move to reach our destination. Garifuna village Las Marias, situated approximately 80 kilometers upstream of the Rio Platano. First, we floated along riverbanks covered by mangroves, past settlements, until we finally arrived at the river. We were mesmerized by a large colony of birds, busily building weaver bird-like nests. We continued upstream with our wooden canoes. We appeared to have scared off a crocodile, Crocodilus acutus, as he glided from the river banks back into the water. During our river trip, we had to disembark on a number of occasions to drag our boat over the sandbank. Branches and tree logs floating below the water surface made it hard to ride our boats. After an eight-hour boat trip, we finally reached our destination, Las Marias. Here we remain for the next four days. Las Marias village only consists of a few huts a church and a school. Las Marias lies in the heart of the Rio Platano Biosphere Reserve, and many unexplored archaeological sites also exist, in addition to incomparable fauna and flora in the tropical rainforest. As expected, we spotted far less animals than we would have done during the rainy season. We almost did not see this well-camouflaged butterfly among the leaves. On the other hand, different types of butterflies and their caterpillars were far more distinct. Our first encounter with green iguanas living in the wild was quite something. These herbivorous reptiles reaching a length of over two meters are a delicacy among the locals and apparently very tasty. That's why they're actually quite shy and usually very hard to capture on film or camera. Admittedly, we were lucky as our exclusive telephoto lenses enabled us to catch some amazing snapshots. But even small creatures, such as this whip spider, make interesting objects of observation. This small anolis refuses to be disturbed by us and carries on hunting for food. Suddenly, we stumble on a one meter long snake, a Dremobius margaritiferus, this type of snake is widespread across Central America. These also generally feed on frogs and small lizards. It made no attempt whatsoever to bite us when we tried to catch it. We could not get over the large and small bromeliads on the trees. We can hardly spot the striking red-eyed tree frogs, the Agalichnis calidrias, in the dense vegetation of the rainforest. They are nocturnal and only show their stunning red eyes and blue flanks if they are woken up. Of course, we need to regain our strength after such a long walking tour, 
with some beans. The next day, we planned to cross the Rio Platano to explore the other side of the river. When sitting in these wobbly log boats, you constantly feel that they could capsize at any moment. That makes us a little nervous in terms of our expensive camera equipment. Obviously, we did not capsize and reached the other bank quickly. From here, we had a beautiful view of Las Marias. We almost overlooked a young crocodile on the sludgy riverbank. Clearly, it felt threatened by us and slowly moved away under protest. For several kilometers, our route took us uphill and downhill through fields and forest. The heat was almost unbearable and our water supply quickly evaporated. But the slog was quickly forgotten when we came across a snake an Oxybelus aeneus, hiding in the shrubs. This tree-living snake can reach a length of nearly two meters, but at the same time is very slender and also feeds on frogs and lizards. If it feels threatened, its mouth rips wide open and shows its black mouth mucosa. This is a so-called opistoglyph, and it has tiny poison fangs in the back area of its mouth. This poison is relatively harmless to humans, However, you still need to be careful. There are small frogs of the genus Kraugastor everywhere in this region. Or those from the genus Hila. The large Eleutherodactylus species can also be found here. Hyalino bitrachium is virtually transparent. A highlight for gecko enthusiasts is the Spherodactylus millipunctatus. They live on the ground and only reach a length of approximately six centimeters. They inhabit the layers of leaves in the woods. Leafcutter ants are building massive work colonies and transport circular cut leaves to their underground tunnels. It's hard to believe that these tiny ants have the ability to carry several times more weight than their own body weight. Green iguanas are always popular photo objects. The tasks and objectives of our expedition unsurprisingly also include UV, temperature and humidity readings. While inspecting a fallen tree log, Roland stumbles across a small scorpion. It's not. The largest gecko in Central America is the Theca dactylus rapicauda. It reaches a length of around 20 centimeters and has a very sensitive skin that slightly tears when it's touched. Oxybelis brevirostris is a slender snake also feeding on frogs and lizards. This snake remains one of the smaller ones, with a total length of approximately 120 centimeters.
Anolis lemurinus is widespread in this area. A young animal of the Ameva festiva species really stands out with its light blue colored tail. Sadly, the young's coloring disappears as they get older. The red colored bromeliads are real eye catchers. The lemur anolis feels disturbed by our presence. The colors of the Cnemidophorus lemniscatus are gorgeous and make it one of the most flamboyant lizards native to Honduras. It reaches a length of around 25 centimeters and inhabits the outskirts of woods and riverbanks. In the middle of the rainforest, we came across an almost finished log boat that had been chopped out of a tree. All that was left to do was to drag it many kilometers through the woods down to the river. From an outlook on a hill, we have the most amazing view over the countryside. In the late afternoon, we return to the river to board our log boat that takes us back to the other side. The smooth water around the river banks is black due to the millions of tadpoles of the genus Agatode rinella marinus. Paul injured himself and had to stay behind in the camp. The rest of the team is off on a night excursion to the other side of the river. Generally, a lot more wildlife can be spotted at night compared to the daytime. The green iguana is clearly not impressed to have his sleep interrupted by us. The blunt-head tree snake, Imantodis sanchoa, is a night hunter and mainly feeds on frogs. Sleeping anolis stand out in the flashlight ray due to their light coloring. The large toads of the genus Rinella marinus are also night hunters. Obviously, it's much easier to take snapshots of sleeping animals. The variety of insects is astonishing. The time has nearly come to head back to camp as the camera batteries have run out. The last morning in Las Marias has arrived. Guy is proudly having some last-minute pictures taken with the ladies of the village and a boa constrictor. It's time for our return trip that will take approximately seven hours and take us across the Rio Platano. Because our trip takes us downstream, it will not take as long as the journey there. But we constantly have to pass many obstacles such as large tree logs, branches and rapids, which can be risky. At one stage, we even rammed into a tree log and almost capsized. At relatively high speeds, we're able to pass friendly folk having a bath or doing their laundry but we are forever being slowed down by wood floating below the water surface. Continuing 
Wandering through the mangroves, we finally reach the lagoon. Unfortunately, a storm is brewing and our next stopover destination is delayed by two days. At last, we moved on. Despite the bad stormy weather, our plane touched down on the runway of Bruce Laguna. First, we flew to La Ceiba and from there to the Caribbean island of Roatan, which is part of Honduras. Here, the most amazing beach in the Caribbean Ocean was waiting for us. Obviously, the stunning green Anolis Alisoni caught our eye right away. In fact, they were everywhere. They reach a length of approximately 20 centimeters and males stand out due to their blue coloring on the head. Ants inhabit these hollow thorns and their bites sting badly. After a short time exploring around our accommodation, we stumbled on a tarantula. After we found one, we realized they were actually everywhere. Willie is totally in his element and lures one tarantula after another out of their hiding. This female spider is guarding her egg cocoon. Our camp is situated near the beach and at the same time in the middle of the woods. In addition to numerous spiders, loads of small geckos of the genus Spherodactylus, that is to say Spherodactylus roseri, inhabit the same ecosystem. Here is a young animal showing its youth coloring. A small stream attracts Roland's attention. The landing net is quickly unpacked. However, it takes him a while before catching a few small life-bearing fish of the genus Poecilia. All we can see at the beginning of our night excursion is a huge butterfly with luminous eyes. Termites and leafcutter ants also inhabit this huge tree. In the ray of the flashlight, we discover a male striped basilisk. We manage to catch it so that we can take some detailed snapshots. The leaves are covered with sleeping small anolis. Clay brown frogs are sitting in small puddles, but we can't determine their species right away. We are interrupting a sleeping Anolis roatanensis. This is what an Anolis roatanensis looks like during the day. It's always a lot of fun to film these beautiful Anolis alisoni. The water snake Goniophanes bipunctatus reaches a length of up to 90 centimeters and mainly feeds on frogs. The small skink, Gymnophthalmus speciosus, that only reaches a length of approximately 8 centimeters, also lives between the leaves in the woods. We proceed with the obligatory measurements. Paul sneaks up to a striped basilisk. Okay. 
We take the boat along the coast to find a suitable spot for finding black iguanas. After searching for ages, we stumbled across a young iguana of the genus Stenosaura odirinia that still has its green coloring. Here is a female in a hollow tree log. In the lava rocks on the river banks, we finally come across an adult male. Stenosaura odirinia reaches an approximate length of 70 centimeters and can only be found on the Islas de Bahia. These animals are extremely shy and due to their coloring are difficult to spot. The young ones feed on insects, whereas the adults mainly feed on plants. After two weeks of living on beans, we well and truly earned our big steak on the second last night. We are aware that we'll be back in the city of San Pedro Sula the next night, and so we truly enjoy our last night on Roatan.